today. It's good to see you. We've talked already online. We want to welcome everyone here today to St. John's United Church of Christ. It should sound pretty good in the mask on that thing, don't it? So, anyway, uh, we've got the Kathy's our worship leader today, and I think this is one of the first times that she is actually the worship leader scheduled, and not somebody for someone else. Uh, so, let's welcome her today. She's got some announcements for us, and uh, we're just going to have a good day. First day at Edmund, how does the front of this church look? And everything, man. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. For those of you that worked so hard to, to string all of this uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and it looks marvelous, and everything else is completed now, and it, uh, I think we're ready for this Edmund journey to begin, all right? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. Well, it's scheduled today. Next week, um, special prayers for Gail. I mean, I know Gail's husband will come down with COVID. So let's all give a good prayers and a good yeah. health. And I just say welcome back, Mark. I'm so glad you're back. Feeling good? And Debbie, the super school terms protected you. Right? You know, when you look at kids all the time, you catch nothing, right? That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, it's always Mark was concerned that um, he wanted to be sure everything was done according to protocol and that uh, he's well beyond the, the, the infectious stage and the testing negative and all of that. Uh, but it's, it's always good to see a walking answer to prayer, Mark. Yeah. And you are an answer. God, God bless you. Good to see you back. Oh. Hope everybody had a great turkey day. Thanks, baby. So much to be thankful. Uh, it, it's funny because you, you miss the big old parties and kids and craziness, but it was nice. It was quiet and it was just close family. And well, we still had turkey and we still had so much to be thankful for. So it should be good, too. So if you have any first time visitors in person and in line, if you're online, please make a note for us so that we can make a special package for you. Yeah. Our next church work day is Saturday, December 5th at 8.30. Um, I can't take enough all of you to turn out and the beautiful gifts that you get for us with your work in time. It's so appreciative. The church is gorgeous because of you. Amen. Be sure to check the calling club names and the names aren't. And the names are, let me get there. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm sleeping at the switch again. Calling club names are John Hewitt, Mark Sneddon, and Larry Lusheen. I think if you call Vivian and Larry, might be uh, on tap there too. So those are our three calling club names John Hewitt, Mark Sneddon, and Larry Lusheen. How's Jack feeling? Mm-hmm. I know he's COVID too. He was, uh, yeah, he's, last I talked to him earlier in the week, uh, he had yet to show any symptoms at all. He said he wouldn't even know he was sick unless he'd gone into the test for a uh, minor surgery <laughs> coming up. So just one of those things, uh, this, this virus is just so, uh, uh, so crazy. And some people it's, it's killing and others it's getting uh, the symptoms. And you just never know. Revelation Bible study continues for the next three weeks, December 2nd, 9th, and 16th. It will be online only. Please evaluate live study again at the beginning of the year as we through this virus. And we need to pray, continue to pray for our good health. Amen. We have a new community preparation list on the bulletin board for 2021. There are still some spots available. If you were able to help, please sign up for this week and month. Advent begins today. Today, hope you enjoy our Jesus Saves Christmas theme. Pastor Wendell is also looking for folks to accept the Advent Challenge of Bible reading beginning December 1st. That's Tuesday. That's right. And uh, I'm going to pause it right there for just a second. I can't be out. What were you telling me on pause? Is that a point where you tell your wife to shut up? <laughs> no, I would never do that. Not to get away with it, at least. And, uh, but and last year we read from December 1st to the 24th a chapter a day. And I know there's a number of you that did that last year. Maybe we're not wanting to do exactly that same thing again this year. So what I've done is, uh, beginning this week, I've got a four-week 
uh, and sheets that if you would like to, there's not as many scriptures, but the scriptures are listed on here. We have front bank week one, two, three, and four. So if you'd like to do something as individuals, as a husband and wife, as a family, you can sit down and you can read this devotion for the weeks of Advent instead of doing something every day. So we're going to give you that option too. Is there anybody that would, would like to take one of these now? We'll hand them out and uh, there you go. And I'll leave the remainder. Or we can print more too. It's like dry out here. I'll give you one or two. So these are good. Two, one. My fingers are dry. Did you guys want him too? All right. Okay. And the rest will be, uh, we'll have some other artifacts if you change your mind here over the next couple of weeks. The Women's Guild Christmas Raffle is slated for next Sunday, December 6th after service. If you still need tickets, no um, contact to. There is a lot of really nice stuff on that table this year. We might have a nice floor Okay. <laughs> you got it. We are planning to have a Christmas drive-by communion for our local area online community on Sunday, December 20th at noon. Please let us know if you'd like to be able to come and celebrate our Lord's work in this very special way. No one will leave their cards, and we hope to see you then. Amen. Amen. And for you that are here live and uh, you want to wait around, get your car, drive by and have community, you're welcome to do that too. We don't want to exclude anybody from that opportunity on that particular day. But we're excited about seeing some folks that uh, we've not seen in a while. So we're, uh, we're looking forward to that every, every Sunday leading up to the 20th, obviously. And then those who are able to stand for call to worship, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in the land of deep darkness, on them light will shine. Come, let us worship the God whose light brings hope to a weary world. And I have number 87 over here. Oh, come, oh, come, be man in your love. What do you say, Lord, we do the first and the fifth?
Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name from on high. He is our God. With social distancing, let's pass the peace. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Kathy. Good morning. Did you give us her? No. No. Did you take this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good morning, Jane. Good morning. 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 Sunshine in the bowl this morning. Uh, <laughs> it's 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 not even going to happen. Well, we live in Indiana, not Florida.
All right. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. We're going to do something just a little bit different this year. Uh, I'm thinking about it. Uh, the past year since I've been here, I have lit the Advent candle. I want you to have a part in that. I've asked our, our church council president, and uh, this, uh, he's not a jack of all trades, he's a gem of all trades. <laughs> I've asked him to come today, and Jim is going to light our hope candle, our hope candle for today. We've got hope, peace, joy, love, and in the middle of the Christ candle. So we're excited about that. Uh, as, as we light these candles over the next week, we're taking the Advent journey. It's a time of preparation. It's a time of uh, contemplation. It's a time of rejoicing as we uh, anticipate the great things that our Lord has for us. Amen. Amen. So our hope candle is lit, and we trust and pray, whether you're here or whether you're watching online, that your hope this morning is in the Lord. He is he's the only one that's a uh, foundation that you can build on, that uh, all other ground, as uh, the song says, is sinking sand. So he is, he is our hope today. Amen. Thank you, Jim, for that. Let me, let me take this off. We will proceed. We will proceed. Jesus is our hope. I've got some scripture in here because Kathy's got the. As hard as she tries, she has not yet figured out how to be in two places at the same time. And uh, I think uh, it seems to be like she is sometimes, but uh, <laughs> we're uh, we're going to do that. I'm looking at the announcements, not the scripture reading. Here we go. A scripture reading that is from Psalm 31, verses 19 through 24. Word of God says, Oh, how abundant is your goodness, which you have stored up to those who fear you, and work for those who take refuge in you in the sight of the children of mankind. In the cover of your presence you hide them from the plots of men. You store them in your shelter from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has wondrously shown his steadfast love to me. When I was in the besieged city, I had said in my alarm, I am cut off from your sight, but you heard the voice of my pleas for mercy when I cried to you for help. Love the Lord, all you his saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but abundantly repays the ones who act in pride. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. Psalm 31, 19 through 24. The Word of God is, is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, and rightly divides the Word of Truth. Advent. Advent. It, uh, it, it just seems a little bit that Thanksgiving has fallen a little bit later this year and uh, it just seems like it snuck up on me a little bit more this year starting usually it starts in December now today is November 29th just a few days early but we're going to enjoy it we're going to enjoy the journey I hope you enjoy the message series that we're starting today about Jesus saving Christmas and that whole title makes sense once we get into uh, the entire aspect of it so I have one question before we go. This, this is a non-spiritual question. Did any of you go out to the stores at 5 a.m. on Black Friday? I want to see. Ah, ah, ah. Wow, it's unanimous. I mean, I rolled over my bed. I think it was 5.15. I looked at my clock and I saw, oh, wow, I could be admired right now. <laughs> No, I did not think that. <laughs> I did not think that. I could be in Macy's right now. But, uh, you know, from what I saw on television, there were some out there, but the, the crowds were less this year than they did before for obvious reasons, of course. People are doing more things uh, online with the fingers and the computers and stuff like that. And, uh, but 
The season has begun. The season has begun. We're, we're excited about that. And for, for your plans, for, for Christmas, whatever they might be, we hope and pray that this, this virus will allow us to uh, you know, enjoy that. We, we rescheduled Easter early in the year. Remember that? Remember we rescheduled because we couldn't hardly have anybody here in the church in March when Easter was. And uh, so we had Palm Sunday and Easter again in June. That we had some, some wonderful turnouts for that. I don't think we could pull off rescheduling Christmas though. So, but we're gonna we're just gonna forge ahead, and uh, everything is is still on schedule. If something changes, uh, we'll let you know. But we're planning on having a uh, a very intimate uh, candlelight service on the 23rd. That's at Wednesday at seven o'clock. If you feel comfortable coming out for something like that. What we'll do is instead of passing candles uh, from one to another, I'm going to have fixed in the aisle. We'll have three or four different candles where you can go to your, from your seat to take your candle and you can light your candle off of that instead of lighting it from someone else's. So we're going to try to do even social distancing things and uh, things to keep you safe, even in the aspect of our candlelight service. There'll be songs and there'll be... Uh, uh, time for some testimony, and uh, we're just gonna you know, share share this at church family on that Wednesday before Christmas, the 23rd. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. All right, let's get to it here this morning. Let's get to it. Jesus sings Christmas. He is our hope today. He is our hope. He is my hope, and I trust and pray that He is yours today. If not. Before they, they, they leave this place, or if you're there in your living room or kitchen or wherever, that you trust in, in Him as your Lord and Savior today. We can show you how to do that. Uh, you know, page by page, verse by verse, online, over the telephone, it doesn't matter. God's Spirit reaches out to everyone. Jesus is our hope. And I was, was jotting down just a few verses about hope, and I'm going to kind of backtracking forth to some of these verses. And uh, the psalm that I just read here, Psalm 31, verse 24, when it says, you know, Be strong and take heart, all of you who hope in the Lord. That was the last verse that we read to you there. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. And Isaiah 40, verse 31, part of that verse tells us, it says, But those who hope and the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up uh, uh, with wings like eagles, you know. They'll run and they won't faint. They renew their strength. They renew their hope in the Lord. I'm going to save a few, a few more of those for just a, a few minutes. But this is our season of Advent. I mean, I love this time of year. I love the, the, the tree, the new tree that we bought last year. It was here yesterday with Kathy Niemeyer. She is our uh, decorator, uh, you know, uh, what's, what's the word that I'm looking for? Uh, something, piece of response or something like that. Uh, some, kind, some kind of phrase, just the top of the line. She just loves to do that kind of thing. And when we've had the ribbons in the past year, we've got these floral arrangements now, red and white. It just looks so Christmassy and just so ready, so ready for the season. So. But this Advent season, that this time that we're entering into, is one of uh, anticipation and one of hope. One of hope. And it's, it's a time when we're preparing for the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's wonderful that we've gathered here and you're gathering with us online for this first Sunday of Advent. Because it is traditionally a time of preparation and a time of waiting. We look forward to it. From this day to the great day of Christmas, as we begin to prepare and celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's all about Him. It's all about Jesus. You know, He is the reason for the season. I think our, our board, I don't know if it's up yet, the same usually changes the board sayings that out front of the church first of the month or so, but uh, I think for this December, if my memory serves, we all know how our memories are sometimes, right? But I think I've got Jesus is our Christmas. 
for, for the December uh, it's saying on the front board of the church. Jesus is our Christmas. It's all about Him. It's not about me. It's not about uh, whatever presents uh, I want or get or something like that. And we'll be developing those thoughts. But if you've been watching any television at all, you already know that the, the commercials about Christmas are running full steam, right? Now, I know that several of you, several of your husband and wife teams, probably one of you is going to go buy a car for the other one, right? At least that's what they tell us on the commercials, right? You know, uh, and and I, I see those, and I, always, I, I shake my head and go, nobody does that. Nobody does it. I mean, I think of the kind of money that I bought, I bought a car, you know, I mean, you just wring your hands, and it's a gut-wrenching thing, and you punch the numbers in your mind, and can I really pay for this? And, and you just go through so much. But you know, on the commercial, they just, uh, oh, let's go buy a car. And I mean, it's, I bought one for you too. You know, and it's, uh, <laughs> they got a blue light special on us. We just got five. I mean, it's just crazy, crazy what goes on this time of year. What they tell us is normal really isn't in most of our lives. Now, if it's normal in your lives, you've got that much extra money laying around, see me, because I'll, I'll help you with it. I'll help you with it, but I don't think that's the case with any of us. But it, it's wonderful to be gathered here. It's wonderful to be anticipating the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what Advent is all about. So but, but, you know, this particular time as we shift, it's always kind of interesting because as we come into Thanksgiving and we segue into Advent season looking forward to Christmas, it's that unofficial time called the, can you help me fill in the blank? It starts with an H, the holidays, holidays. I heard some of you murmuring under your breath, the holidays. And so right now we're in that official holiday season as we've uh, come to know. We're enjoying, we've enjoyed the great festivities as Kathy alluded to of Thanksgiving. Uh, even though it was different than it's been before, we still had some turkey. We still enjoyed some time with family, whether it was in person or uh, Zooming or Skyping or video chatting or whatever. Uh, but right now, the world has shifted its focus toward Christmas. The world has shifted its focus toward Christmas as we go into the holiday season. Our culture, our commercials, our media, they all point toward December 25th as the next big day, the next big day on our world. And of course, as we're celebrating Advent today and the first Sunday of it, that's what Advent does. Advent is the season that points us with a posture of hopeful waiting toward our Savior's birth. It points us toward Christmas in a way that uh, we're anticipating the birth of this baby in the manger. We're, 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 uh, as I look right here, I can almost see the, the manger scene, you know, with the shepherds and, and the baby Jesus laying there, and Mary by him, and Joseph on one side. And a cattle, you can almost see it. We've actually got it up here. Actually got it up here. Lovely display. But we're preparing for that. We're preparing for that as we go there. We all have different ways as we hopefully wait for Christmas. We all have different ways of participating in this season of hopeful waiting. For many, for, for many that don't get into the quote-unquote religious aspect of Christmas, and uh, I'm just going to go on record today, there is no other aspect of Christmas. I mean, it, it's all about Jesus. He is the reason for the season. But there are folks that uh, just want to push that aside, want to set that aside. I actually had a guy at co who told me one time, he says, I just get really annoyed with all this religious stuff at Christmas time. I mean, and I looked at it in disbelief, thinking he was, you know, yanking my chain or, or just trying to uh, get, get a rise out of me. But he was totally serious. He said, I just don't understand what the big fuss is. Why do they have to interject religion at Christmas? Obviously, he was really confused about what Christmas 
It's all fun. So as we're on this Advent journey and we're leading up to this Christmas time, as you're, you know, whether you're reading a chapter a day or you're going to do the uh, week-long Advent journey with, uh, with some of us at the church here in the devotion, everything points toward Christmas. As we focus on our hopeful waiting for this season. For many, you know, as I said, for those that uh, don't include the Lord, in their Christmas celebration. It's all about getting time off work or time off school or eating a nice meal uh, for Christmas or other treats. And of course, getting something nice under the tree, some kind of present, whatever it might be. But those of us that love the Lord, we see Christmas just a little bit differently. While we do enjoy ourselves, I don't know anybody that doesn't enjoy time off who's working a regular job, or a nice meal, or treats, or even presents. I mean, our focus is not on those things. Our focus is on Christ and keeping Him at the center of the celebration. So as we walk this Advent walk, we're keeping Christ where He needs to be, in the center of our celebration. He's the center of it. But even for them, even for those of us, that are doing that, there can be a great deal of, of baggage in our lives. From Christmases, Christmases past, and perhaps even Christmases present, even from our youth, we wrestle with different things. Uh, as you know, you, you probably heard this, uh, the holiday season is the time of year where you know, there's more and more people that get depressed, they, get, they feel lonely, and uh, all of that, they feel anxious, uh, you know, all of these quote-unquote questionable or negative emotions seem to service. And with what is going on for the past eight months or so with this pandemic, uh, those numbers are even up more than usual. Those things are just, just people are just anxious, they're scared, uh, they're concerned, they're worried over so many different things. We just don't know how things are going to turn out sometimes. If our eyes aren't firmly focused on the Lord, we can be, we can be very anxious and very worrisome about stuff. But you know, I remember here in the next few weeks we'll be talking to you about some things. Uh, I'll talk about three specific things. You know, Christmas isn't about fear of not being good enough or not buying enough. Anybody remember the old adage, uh, you know, you, you better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you all right. Because Santa Claus is coming to town. And I mean, as the song goes on, you know, he knows when you've been sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. And, you know, we sing the song and we laugh about it and we think it's cute. But when you think about the, the traumatic effect of that, and we'll be speaking to more, more about that next week, that this is, you better be good or else. You better be good, but the, the pressure of it, if you're not good, you're not going to get nothing. You're not going to get nothing. But most of us know, and perhaps some of us in days gone by, I'm already preaching next week's message. I'm going to have to consult Bonnie for something to preach next week. Uh, <laughs> but it, it just it just seemed to segue into it. But yeah, you know, if we, I, 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 I knew one one kid that I went to school with. He was telling telling uh, telling us it's his friends, and he said, "Yeah, I found all the presents." He said, I was sick from school one day and I found all the presents and I opened all of them up and I took them out of the box and I played with all of them and then I put them all back together and I put it in the, he, 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 uh, he obviously wasn't very good, was he? But you know what? He still got presents. Even though he was found out, even though he was disciplined, there were still presents for him under the tree. So the whole aspect of the traumatic event of, you better be good or else, 
He could have carried that with him, but still, he was rewarded. He was rewarded at Christmas. So the things that we can know that really aren't true. We can watch out. We can not cry. We can try to do good things. But we still get rewarded as kids. Not being good enough. Other folks do. They think they have to buy the uh, they gotta buy, I just have to find that perfect gift. For him, for her, for them. They have to find that perfect gift. And they distress themselves to no end because they have to find that perfect gift and they have to spend a, a certain amount of money. Another friend of mine, years gone by, unless they spent between five and ten thousand dollars on two or three people for Christmas. I'm not talking about you know, six or seven families. I'm talking about two or three people. Unless they spent that, that amount of money, they didn't feel they had done enough. So there was this pressure to just spend. Just spend. That's what Christmas meant to them. The necessity to spend. We're going to talk about Jesus saving Christmas from that mindset. We're going to talk about Jesus saving Christmas from the fear of not being good enough that you're going to be good. That if you're good or if you're bad, then that way you won't get anything. Christmas isn't about guilt and shame, especially when it comes to generosity. Christmas also isn't about pretending that we have it all together, that we can find that perfect gift. It's not about that either. In a sense, our understanding of those people that feel that way, their understanding of Christmas needs saving. And that's what this series of messages that we're going to be preaching to the next few weeks is all about. We're going to talk about key ideas of how Christmas should be the way God intended it to be. So that the hope that we can have in Him, the hope as we look forward, as this whole candle has been lit, the hope that we have is to focus on Jesus. Not on what I can buy or what I can do or, or uh, the choices I can make. The hope is, is focus on Jesus. Because He's the only one that can save Christmas for me. Yeah, he's the only one that can save Christmas for you. He's the only one. He's the only one because Christmas is about Him. It's about Him. About the good news of Christmas. But many struggle to see the good news in Christmas. So our job during this Advent season, this task that the Lord gives to us is that we need to portray the goodness of Christmas. We need to portray the truth of Christmas. Truth is always true. Truth is always true. In our Revelation Bible study, we're talking about uh, the series of messages leading up into the, the tribulation time when Satan is deceiving the world into thinking that he can save them from God's wrath. Nothing could be farther from the truth. Nothing can save the world from God's wrath. The only thing that can save the world from God's wrath are on the cross, like the one behind me. The only thing that can save the world from God's wrath is the blood that was shed on that cross. That was the blood of Jesus Christ. And the only thing that can pay for the sin that, that, that causes God's wrath is the resurrection when he says, I will pick up my life. I'll die for yours. I'll pay for your sins with my life. With the third day, I'll raise again. That's what the Advent journey is. It begins with the birth. It begins with the birth and it ends at the cross. And that cross paid, paid the cost for my sins. For my sins. Not a religious uh, meaning, but a personal choice. I chose to ask Jesus as my Savior. You must do the same. You watching online must do the same. It's not something that happens 
automatically. It's not something that uh, we're, we're born into. It's not something that we can inherit from Aunt Susie or Uncle Joe or from Mom or Dad because they were good people, God-fearing people. They loved the Lord. We don't inherit those things from them. We make that choice in our relationship with Jesus Christ. There's good news for us. In these next few weeks, we're going to talk some more about how Jesus saves saves Christmas. And more specifically, how He saves us from the false ideas that Christmas should be, or what Christmas should be, or He reorients us uh, to what is beautiful and good and true. So as we explore these next few weeks in this Advent journey, you pray for me, and I'll pray with you, because Jesus wants us to be satisfied satisfied in Him as we embark upon this Advent journey. What is your hope today? Where is your hope today as we've written this thing with this uh, Advent candle? I conclude with this scripture more and we'll, we'll be ready to proceed. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, I'm looking at verses 14, 15, and 16. The Bible says, And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying, worthy of all acceptation, that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. It's the Apostle Paul talking here to young Timothy. He says, How be it for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus might show forth all longsuffering for a pattern to them, which should hereafter believe on Him to life everlasting. So you, as we embark upon this journey of Advent, we can be what the Apostle Paul says. We can be a light to those in the world around us. We can be a light to those that are anxious. We can be a light to those that are fearful. We can be a light to those that are trembling in terror. And we can point them toward our Savior so that they can know the peace and the hope that is only found in Him. Do you know that peace today? If you're watching online, have you received that hope? Have you trusted Jesus as your Savior? It's as simple as A, B, C. We admit that we're a sinner. We believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. We confess our sins to Him. You don't have to confess anything to me. He knows your hearts already. Will you trust Him? Will you make Him your Savior today? He'll say, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let's enjoy this Advent season. Let's trust, trust Jesus as our hope today. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you so much. All right, Lord, well, let's do that next song, 95. It came upon a midnight clear. 95. First and the fourth verses.
at this time, take some prayer requests. He said it's good to have an answered prayer with Mark and Debbie back with us today. Amen. Thank you, thank you. Yes, Mark. Um, I have on my uh, prayer, ongoing prayer request uh, um, for our friend Kelly Ingram who okay. had cancer. Yes. Uh, but we found out this week that she was taken into the hospital uh, positive with COVID and had breathing issues. Oh. Um, but the, the uh, glimmer of hope is the fact that we got an update from her daughter saying that she is being given remdesivir, and uh, they expect her to go home on, on Monday. Amen. So it's actually a glimmer of hope. She was obviously, you know, she has cancer, and, you know, that probably brought her immunities down and made her more susceptible to this. Right. You know, even seeing her recover is, is, is hopeful. Amen. 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 That is hopeful indeed. And for those of you that are we've had Kelly Ingram on our prayer list uh, uh, for some time for her battle with cancer. We continue to pray for her and now with the COVID, and hopefully she's uh, uh, com- coming through that. Uh, let just pray that her body continues to fight. Continues to fight. So I'll go with her. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Who else? Who else? Yes, Irene? Um, pray for President, Vice President. Attorney General of the United States and Rudy Giuliani and the legal teams that are helping the president. And I'd also like prayer for my daughter. She's interviewed tomorrow. I'm hoping that. Well, based on God's perfect Amen. Amen. All right, let's pray for Kim. She's interviewed tomorrow, you said? Okay, good. I'll pray for her, Kim. Who else? Who else? Anyone else got any on mind there? Yeah. Uh, Linda Jones Hughes, prayers please for my heart rate to go down. Okay, Linda Hughes, okay. Friend of ours, uh, uh, of the family. Let's pray for Glenda this morning. Heart rate issues. Anybody else? Yes, Vivian. My friend Cora Rusher is recovering from some bleeding ulcer. She's back home from the hospital, and um, she's very weak. She needs our prayers. Okay, let's pray for Cora. She's a uh, uh, very. Yeah. Cora's a mom, right? Cora's the mother. Okay, mother. okay. They used to come, the mother daughter used to come quite frequently. Yes, she's, her health is deteriorated and I'm unable to do that. So let's pray for Cora Rusher uh, for increased uh, her health issues. All right, anybody else? Unspoken then by uplifted hands? All right, God sees your hands and your hearts. That's true, they pray for one another. Take advantage of the calling club names and, you know, name doesn't have to be on the calling club sheet for you to call someone and just uh, let them know you're thinking about them or praying for them or uh, uh, you know, have prayer with them right there over the phone. Just, just let them know that uh, you care, whatever it is they want to. Let's take a moment for silent prayer and we'll pray for these and, uh, and say God's uh, Lord's Prayer before our offering. We do thank you, Father, today for this opportunity to come in prayer. We thank you for these that are assembled here and for those that are watching online or to those that will watch the service uh, or perhaps in some portion uh, later on this week. We just uh, are grateful for the opportunity, Lord, to put these things out there in digital media in a world where uh, your word is, is going forth and we know from what the Bible tells us that word never, never goes forth, uh, or it always spills a void. And we're thankful for that. Help us to be faithful to that. Pray for our folks that uh, we'll be doing devotions, we'll be doing extra reading this coming week, that you prepare our hearts for, for, for this season of Advent, as we prepare for our Savior's birth. 
We're thankful that Mark is here with us today, and Lord, we're glad that he's come through this, uh, this COVID experience. I know it's been, uh, been a difficult journey for him, but we're glad that he's here, and we're glad that he's healthy, and that uh, Debbie is, is healthy as well. I pray for the young lady, the friend that they have, that we've uh, been praying for her cancer for some time, Lord Kelly Ingram. Continue up with her and the Lord as she's been struggling with COVID and given this uh, this new drug. We just pray, Lord, that uh, even now the trend, as Mark said, would continue, that she would be able to come home and the Lord continue to recover as her body fights cancer and this this uh, this uncaring virus. And Lord, uh, we pray for other church members that have this. I know uh, John Jewett uh, has had it. He's not had symptoms, Lord, today, but we just pray for John. He didn't touch him up with Gloria. We pray, Lord, for Jenny Arndt, who uh, has had uh, some, some health issues. And Lord, we spoke with Steve Becker this past week. Lord, uh, continue to bless Steve as he's recuperating, Lord, uh, at home now. And that uh, keep him safe and well and uh, just nestled in your arms, Lord, as uh, he's recovering from the falls and just, just all that trauma he, he went through, Lord, here within the past uh, six weeks. Lord, up with them, and pray for Irene, and, and Lord, all our president, and uh, Lord, the, the political folks that uh, she mentioned, each one, and our courts, and, and Lord, uh, give all these folks wisdom to, to make choices based upon your word. And Lord, we pray that uh, for the job interview that her daughter, Kim, will have in the morning, that, that this is uh, your will for her, that you open that door, that she'd be able to obtain this job, and Lord, begin, uh, begin earning and begin experiencing the benefits of, uh, of this blessing. For our good friend, uh, family friend, Glenn Hughes, we pray for uh, her heart rate and the issues that she's been having here lately, Lord. We pray that just touch her and strengthen her and get her back on the road to, to recovery for that. And Lord, uh, for Vivian's uh, friend and uh, friend of the church, Lord, Cora Russia. We just pray for her as uh, the health issues that she's been experiencing. And God, for each one that lifted their hand for an unspoken request, you know when you meet us at the points of these needs as well. We pray that you bless our church, Lord, during this Advent time. Bless our ladies group as they're preparing to minister to nursing homes as well as uh, to, to the church. And we just pray, uh, Lord, that we can be faithful. We have the uh, the, the raffle next week, Lord. Uh, we thank you for all those who made contributions uh, to the table that's in the narthex, and Lord, who worked so very hard to uh, make this event successful, uh, fun fundraising wise, uh, Lord, from the ladies group and, and their ministry. We appreciate uh, Lord, everyone who has a part in that. Bless us, Lord, continue uh, as we walk with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's people said together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. At this time, uh, our should come up. We're going to receive our morning offering. If you that are watching online, if you can help us out too, either drop yours uh, offering in the, in the mail or bring it here by the church. Our is usually at the church uh, office most days, 10 to 2. Uh, each day. We'd love to have... Uh, we can do that so we can meet the obligations and finance for the finances of the church here. Because those things do not go away with the hope of the pandemic. Amen. Right. Thank you, Usher Scott. <laughs>
Lord, we thank you for the gift and for the giver today. We pray that you continue to meet us at the point of our needs, and our hearts on this Advent journey. We give you the thanks and praise for our hope in Jesus today. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right, for our last song today, 93, I believe, right? Angels we have heard on high. Let's do the first and the fourth verses of this one. This one will get you a toe tap. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>